Squad, it's Squads. Welcome back to another review video. This week I received a care package through the post from Flyru in the form of the Goku F722 Pro V2. And I was having issues with my Walk Now 5 inch build because I was using a 3D printed adapter to use a 20 by 20 stack. So I figured I would put it in this, considering I know it's a brilliant quad to fly, and see how good this stack is. So let's take a quick look at it. So I know that the community is pretty pissed off with lots of influencers throwing out reviews saying that this is the best thing ever. I'll never do that. I have done that in the past. I've apologised for it. I'll never, ever do that. So what I'm going to do first of all is just very quickly list a few of the specs. So it's a Goku F722 Pro version 2. It's 50 amp ESC B Hell Heli S and it uses the MP6000 gyro. It's got a 16 megabyte black box built in and has six spare UARTs and it has a 10 volt BEC and a 5 volt BEC. Now that's really important and actually one of the main selling points of this for me. Now I do always try to aim my channel towards the newbie aspect and the great thing with this is it comes with plugs for every single one of the UARTs as well as solder points and in the box you also get cables for every one of the plugs. Now sometimes you will have to repin them, they might be the wrong way around so please if you are a newbie and you get this double check that the positive goes to the positive and the negative goes to the negative. Don't just believe the colours. Always, always double check. I've been there. I've done it. Please learn from my experience. Now, as I put the build on screen, uh, slowly putting it together step by step, um, what I decided to do is obviously for a newbie's point of view, it's brilliant using these, these modular uh, clips. And I think it's a, a fantastic way to go. And I think realistically it's probably the future of the hobby but like I say people do need to be aware that the pinouts are different so what should be red to red or positive to positive isn't always the case so what I decided to do as well is I'd used a plug for the um, I think it was the GPS um, but then everything else I decided to solder in but I soldered in first and then thought well hang on a second why don't I do it the other way around and check one so the, the point about the soldering is the pads are very, very small and it took me a little bit by surprise because the battery pads are absolutely massive and then the actual solder pads are quite small. So if you actually look at my solder job, it's not the best, especially considering some of the solder jobs that I've done are actually half decent. Now, again, looking at the newbie aspect, this comes with rubber grommets on the ESC and rubber grommets on the flight controller and I installed it that way deliberately the first time because that's what a newbie would do even though we all know for your ESC you shouldn't put it on rubber grommets it just causes too much vibrations through the gyro and I then took it out for a flight and the results were spectacularly bad I will be honest with you um, and I will have some some footage on screen from the DVR and this is stabilized footage from the DVR and it just shows you how uncontrollable it was at first. I crashed into the tree and I crashed through the tree. This, you know, realistically, it, it was really, really bad. So, and that was because of those, those rubber grommets just causing too much vibration. It just wasn't stable enough. So what we did is we completed this fly to get the test, test data to show you guys. We brought it back in and then we did it properly. And we put the, um, the, the hard mountains on the ESC. And it flies way, 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 way better like it should do. Now, the reason I'm highlighting this, and, and like I said at the start, the community is quite pissed off right now with influencers saying, this is the best thing ever. I've been sending it for free. Um, go and buy it, support me. I'm not going to do that. Okay, so this flight controller stack is reasonably priced and is very well specced, but it doesn't come with any instructions. So... As a newbie, you think, well, they've already put that in, so that makes perfect sense. Why fly we've done this, I don't know. I assume it's maybe it's just for shipping, but, but hey-ho, it is what it is. But there's no instructions to say this is how you should do it. And some people are not going to necessarily know that. We're here to help people get along in the hobby rather than expecting everybody to know everything. So it is a point of their fly room. That needs sorting out. You don't send instructions out. That's fine. Put a little card in saying go online, download the manual. So they don't do that. They should do that. So what I did is I went online onto the website to download the manual. And that's the second problem. There is no manual. So with my experience and my knowledge, it's fine. I was able to sort it all out. 
and I knew what I was doing. And there is a diagram on there for the pinouts, um, although every pad is labeled, so it's quite easy in that respect. It's not really difficult. Now, one of the big selling points, along with the modular design of this flight controller, is that it has a 10 volt controllable back. What does that mean? I hear some of you newbies say, well, what it means is we can turn off our VTX. So as we all know, the, the VTX, the Cadex Vista, the uh, DJI 03, the Walk Snail Avatar, the HD Zero, they all get really, really hot, especially when they just sat there doing nothing. And as FPV pilots, we have to sit there and wait for our GPS to kick in which can take a couple of minutes. In the meantime, our VTX is overheating. So this solution is absolutely phenomenal by Flywheel. However, once again, there is a problem with it. There's no instructions on how to do it and how to set it up in beta flight. Now, I've reached out to my contact in Flywheel and I've explained this to them. And mysteriously overnight, they've added something to the website, which is good, except for the fact the instructions they've included are incorrect and if we look on the website i should have a screenshot hopefully lined up with this now we can see that what fly will actually say is to select user one and set it up that way in the beta flight modes tab however this flight controller doesn't actually have user one as an option within beta flight it only has user two so i took a look at it and i tried this particular option which says vtx power that makes perfect sense doesn't it so i set vtx power to a switch and i tested it and again on screen hopefully now as long as i've got my shit together you will see that the vtx turns off when i press the button and turns on when i depress the button although turning back on does take a little bit of time however that's just going through its reboot sequence you don't generally notice that when you plug your your battery in because you're putting your goggles on the flight control is booting up but it just it just take about i don't know 15 20 seconds for this walk snail avatar pro to boot up anyway which is really not a, not, a, not a massive issue because the reason you've had it off is to keep it lovely and cool while the gps finds itself so an extra 10 seconds for the gps while this boots up really isn't a problem is it so i will include some proper flight footage from the action camera to show how well it actually does fly once it's tuned in if you want i will include um i don't know how i actually apply to beta flight to put my tunes on there as as a download in the presets i don't know if i can if anybody knows if that's possible please reach out and let me know but uh, if anybody wants to know the tune of this I can, I can leave it below. What I will say is for the cost, which currently is 63 English pounds, don't know what it is in dollars, etc. For an F7 with six UARTs, a 50 amp BL Heli S flight controller. Now, we all know that BL Heli 32 is much better, etc, etc, etc. But in real terms, in real life, for the majority of pilots, once you use the ESC configurator and flash Blue Jay to an EL Heli S flight controller, you then get bi-directional D-Shot and the difference between an, a BL Heli 32 and a BL Heli S becomes negligible for 99.9% .9 of us. So I would highly recommend this, but with a few caveats. So first of all, it's for an F7 stack, it's cheap. It's got some great features. The modular design is brilliant, especially even if you can solder and you just think I can't really be bothered. You can then stick a build together in minutes because you're just putting some plugs in, aren't you? It's also got that amazing 10 volt control back, which is phenomenal once you know how to set it up. And I think because I did look on YouTube, I am the only person to actually detail how to set it up properly. Most people say it's good and it's there, but nobody's actually set it up. And like I say, I did reach out to my contact in Flywheel and I didn't actually get a response, but they did update the website incorrectly. So hopefully I will reach out to Flywheel now. I will let them know their errors and hopefully they will update the website properly. But if not, send people here if they struggle uh, because we have the answer. I think overall I would rate this um, probably 8 out of 10 if I had to put a number on it. I think for the price, for the ease of use, once you know how to set it up, it's brilliant. I think, I know everyone's really pissed off with influencers saying, oh, buy this, buy that. But, but actually, if I would have had documentation detailing this, I'd have struggled to find anything wrong with it, but they didn't. And thankfully, I'm an experienced builder and pilot, but not everybody is. So I can't give you four marks because it just wouldn't be fair. If a, if a newbie got hold of this, um, and, and tried to set it up with those grommets, those rubber grommets on the on the ESC, potentially crashing it and destroying it, and they don't know why. So probably seven out of ten, really, because the, the possibility of of catastrophic crash, as you could see at the start of my DVR. I mean, I've very nearly binned it into that 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 trip. Well, I did bin it into the tree. I quickly figured out what was going on. And although it did look like I went towards the hedge, I had full control of it at all times and I had my finger on the switch ready to GPS rescue it.
and a horizon level it if need be. So we were fully in control, but I wanted to show just how much of a cluster it actually looked. Okay, I've been quads. I recommend you buy one if you know what you're doing. And I would recommend to look below for some tuning guides, but I'd also recommend to watch this video to learn how to set up that 10 volt back because that 10 volt back is one of the main selling points. And then the only other thing I'm going to say, again, just the caveat of the, the plugs are brilliant, but just remember not all pinouts are the same. So just because it's giving you a positive wire out of the flight controller doesn't mean that that's going to be the positive wire that goes into your peripheral. So please, please double check it before powering on. And as always, Use a smoke stopper whenever you're doing a build. I've been quads, you've been amazing. Until the next time, peace.